This is the classic, well two examples, of the model 1916 Colt 45 automatic pistol holster. Classic design, leather, US embossed on the front. It can be accounted in brown leather and black leather. Brown leather ones issued 1916 onwards right the way through the Second World War. Sometimes the ones that fetch a premium price will be makers marked and dated on the back. On the back you've got a provision for to be slung from the belt, eyelets. Also you've got provision to be put on an earlier pattern belt. It's got belt loops on it but normally between where you've got the two belt loop slashes you usually have manufacturer's name sometimes a date sometimes you just get a name sometimes you just get a date sometimes you get nothing if you have one with a manufacturer's name and the big long telephone number it's going to be a 1970s 80s manufactured one for the commercial shooter market because obviously there's military ones and there's ones for the american commercial shooter so you have to be careful because it is a minefield with these things, but they are fairly easily identified. This is the model 1916 one for dismounted troops, infantry, as it's got the standard wire attachment for going through the eyelets on the pistol belt. Another version is the cavalry version, which kind of has an extra leather section that comes up. The leather section is attached to the, the holster by, a, by a, a stud or a rivet. And on the top of the leather section is these provisions for it to be slung on the belt. Now that's so that when it's worn by the cavalryman, on the rivet, it hinges on the rivet so it can move like that. Now those holsters were favoured by vehicle drivers in the Second World War because obviously when you put that on your belt and you have a gun in it, that is rigid. It doesn't move. But if, if you wear the old cavalry holster version, when you're driving a jeep or something like that, when you sling it on the belt, it actually moves out of the way like that. Okay, so there are two versions, basic versions of it, but there's various different um, issues over the years. Those that are in black leather tend to be the post-war um, Vietnam issue ones. They're handy because you can paint them white for multiple police use. They never issued a white one, okay? Generally, the white ones for military police have been painted tan leather ones and generally a painted tan leather one is less value than a proper original tan leather one. This one is manufacturer's mark on the bottom Enger Kreis or Kreis. No date and it's just a standard good old World War II one brown leather painted white for military police issue. Inside this is what it's for, the classic model 1911 ACP or in this case it's actually the Argentinian license copy the, the ballista copy so that's what it's for this other one in brown leather it's got on the back Cathy Enterprises and a big long phone number this is a post-war one for the commercial shooter market. When you look at it from the front, it's absolutely no different to a wartime one. The only difference is, on the back, between the belt thing, you have the phone number. Nobody's going to notice, so a post-war commercial one is just as good as an original wartime one. And they should be a lot cheaper as well. Very hard wearing, very easy to maintain. Takes no looking after at all. When you get one, in its neutral leather just give it a good going over with leather food makes it nice and supple what you find is after the war i'll put that one down after the war when these are surplus what tends to happen is the surplus people take a knife they cut between the belt loop mount and they remove these wire loops so do be aware you do find them where it's been cut across and the belt support loop thing has been removed very very difficult to repair also, some of them have stitching that's gone out of them. The stitching does rot in them. Try to avoid any where the stitching 
is badly rotted. Try and get the most complete one you can find. Failing that, buy a modern day reproduction. Um, original ones of these now, they're collected by manufacturer's date, manufacturer's mark. So go to the days when if you wanted a 45 holster, you just went out and bought one. Now people collect them by the manufacturer's dates, the years and things like that. So the prices do tend to get a bit silly. However, you can buy an exact reproduction, which looks just like that for about 20 quid, $40. And it does exactly the same thing that a, that a genuine one would do. So if you're gonna just buy one for reenactment, get a modern reproduction or a commercial one like that. At the bottom, there's an eyelet for a piece of cord that fastens it around the leg just to keep it steady, stop it flopping about. But that's your standard, good old, really good hide leather Model 1916 also, that's the pattern of it. So it was issued from 1916, right the way through to the Vietnam War, as a military piece, and from the Vietnam War, right to today, right now, as a civilian commercial item. So there's thousands and thousands of them out there, but what's on the back determines what it is. If you can get one that's got a nice World War II date, and by World War II, I mean pre-45, that adds to the value. If you get one that's World War I dated, so much the better but by and large most of the ones you'll encounter nowadays will be these ones by Cathy Enterprises and they'll have a phone number on the bottom post-war civilian commercial shooters items whereas this one which originally started out life as a tan one it's been painted white for military police issue it's actually stamped Enger Crease in the back which is World War II um, your, your post-war um, Vietnam War ones, the black leather ones, can be used as a World War II um, American military police one, but generally the American military police only will issue with black leather equipment for a very short while, so technically you can use a black leather one for American military police reenactment, but you will be limited into which theatre you can actually wear it for. But by and large, they are available, rate reductions, they do cost very very minimal price far better than buying an original so we'll take a look at the construction of these they're very very hard wearing there's no provision for a spare mag there's no provision for a cleaning rod it's purely a pistol holster so we'll have a look at it anyway so let me just get that out the way it's got standard push button fixing there and you can see this one's starting to crack away with the paint work on it it's got US embossed the uh, leg cord ring there very very well constructed of quality hide leather on the top you've got the belt loop and as I say they're usually slashed across there when surplus and that's removed. On the back, you have a belt tunnel, and round about here determines what year it is. So if I go in, just under the paint, it's stamped, and, it, and, and they are physically stamped into the leather as well. It's not an ink stamp, it's actually stamped in the leather. In this case, it's stamped, you may not be able to pick it out too well, Enger Kreis. And inside, it's got this slightly awkward padded section down there. I stop the gun bang banging against your leg, but it is it is a snug fit for a 45. But that's what it's for. And this other one, this is a post-war one, exactly the same manufacturer, US stamped into it. Absolutely no different. I mean, the, the 1916 to World War II one may have brass rivet post war one in all likelihood is going to have a black if i can get it open a black parkerized metal rivet but the construction is exactly the same internally externally absolutely no different it's still got the us embossed on it it's got the rivets all the thread in exactly the same place the same belt tunnel on the back but as you can see this one is a commercial one 
Cathy Enterprises and the big long number is a phone number. And you get them in tan, black leather, painted, military police painted white. You can get black ones painted military police white for Vietnam War issue. You can get black ones painted olive for Vietnam War. And of course, as I say, you can get the, the cavalry troop one which went into World War II. Now the cavalry troop one has these not on here. The cavalry troop one has an extended leather section that comes up here. These two belt hooks are kind of up here. And as the leather section comes down, it's fitted to the back of here by a rivet. And that's so on the rivet, the holster can actually move freely like that. So that's one to keep an eye for. And again, they do reproduce them. But do be aware, all the genuine ones will be naked marked across ways. Not, they're not marked. They're not marked downwards like that. All the genuine ones are marked across ways like that. And the nicer ones are dated and maybe month stamped. But this one is just by Inga Kreis. So that's just two nice holsters. And this is a Argentinian copy of the Colt model 1911. It's got all the trade names on it and everything. So that's what it's for anyway. It just sits rather nicely into there. So that's the model 1916 Colt 45 holster for the model 1911 onwards variants of the Colt semi-auto pistol.